Hello, fight fans, and welcome to another edition of Fight News Now Extra. I'm your host, John Pollock, and we're taking you through all of the news going on in mixed martial arts with John Ramdean and Robin Black, including Tim Kennedy wanting a new Brazilian opponent, Tito Ortiz debuts on Spike TV for the second time in two nights, and Bellator numbers are in for their live card. The numbers for Wednesday night's Bellator 97 card on Spike TV are in with the live card averaging 679,000 viewers for their loaded card featuring two title fights, two tournament finals, and the announcement of their first pay-per-view event for November the 2nd with Quinton Jackson set to fight Tito Ortiz. Speaking of Ortiz, the latest addition to the Bellator family appeared as the mystery man on Impact Wrestling Thursday night at the close of the show, where he came out to little reaction and stared down the performers in the ring, including Quinton Jackson, as they will look to cross-promote their pay-per-view on Impact, which is the highest-rated programming on Spike TV. And Tim Kennedy is looking to fight a Brazilian, but isn't exactly thrilled about the idea of fighting Vitor Belfort in Brazil. Kennedy tells Bleacher Report that with the Belfort fight looking to be out the window, he would love to fight Vanderlei Silva in Brazil in place of the proposed Belfort fight that UFC President Dana White was hopeful of making. I know both of you had a prior engagements and thus couldn't catch Impact Wrestling on Thursday night, featuring a show-long tease of a mystery man, and at the end of the night, Tito Ortiz comes down the ramp with Quinton Jackson in the ring. It felt like deja vu. Well, I mean, that's just what you need to do. You've got to make sure that your audience knows that Tito Ortiz is now part of the kind of Spike family, if you will, uh, and if they can cross-promote... He's got to be on Bar Rescue tonight, yeah, of I course, think. That, that, makes, that only exactly. makes... That, uh, it's not their highest rated... No, you said Impact's their highest Cops rated. Cops is too. actually... Do, their reruns of Cops on that station Dude, do tremendous. Of course, it's Cops. Cops is a phenomenal yeah. show. It's one of my very favorite Like, I'm shows joking. Ever. Cops, like, the reruns do double what Bellator's live card did this week. I'm not joking. It is one of my favorite so shows. So maybe Tito and Quentin, if you're going to do a storyline, maybe uh, Tito breaks into Quentin's house, and that's the impetus here for the fight. Well, I, I, Quentin I, I, chases him in his big Hummer. <laughs> Hummer? Is, are, are we talking about Tito's wife? She's the one actually who mentioned that he had drugs in a drawer somewhere, so that could be an episode of Cops. Oh my gosh. I think we should really be working for Viacom here yeah. and selling this pay-per-view. I mean, this is the non-traditional method. When you're Bellator, you got to be experimental when it comes yeah, to a pay-per-view. Sure. You know, I, I'm just curious to see if wrestling fans are actually, I'm curious if MMA fans are going to buy the pay-per-view. And clearly, Spike is looking at, we need to promote this in all avenues, and we're just throwing stuff at the wall, and we'll see what sticks, because we got to make some money here, because I guarantee you, those two guys are making a lot of money to fight on that pay-per-view. Yeah, and I think that's where the big question comes. If you don't can't add an extra hundred plus thousand because they're there, what are you doing really? Because you got young stars. Maybe you could do forty or fifty thousand with Askren and uh, you know they're just their young stars, Chandler and 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 those guys. But if you add Tito and and Rampage, you suspect you're going to do a ton. You better do a ton because if you don't, you're kind of wasting your money. What do you take from uh, the numbers? Bellator 97, 697,000 viewers. It, it's definitely up from their last show in June, but it's still a number that when you look at how loaded that show was, I mean, it really does give you a perspective of what the Bellator audience is. Oh, I get it, but I mean, the audience is continuing to grow. I mean, Rome wasn't built in that day, and I know Bellator's been around since 2009, but they really haven't had, uh, you know, the place on Spike that they have right now exposed to the masses. I mean, I know people here at the Fight Network that don't watch Bellator because they're not really sure what type of product they're getting. But, you know, the conversations now or the talk is that this is an excellent product. Now with Tito and uh, Rampage, of course, people are like, what are you talking about? This seems very strange that these guys are in it. But I think it's like the Trojan horse. You draw, use Tito Ortiz and Rampage, but you got to build your other stars and you have to entertain everybody. So make sure that when you have that pay-per-view, you have the stars that people will come back to well, see. And to that point, when they were running on Thursday nights earlier this year, their numbers were higher when you had yes. Impact as a lead-in yeah. for those cards. And yeah. And that people who were watching Impact stuck around to watch Bellator, and without that lead-in, it, it hurt their numbers. Yeah, you make a good point. It was in the 900,000 range early when they launched on Spike, which is great stuff. But if we are putting it in perspective, some of the early UFC on Fuel was like 150, yeah, exactly. 180,000. So Fu Fuel's in a lot less homes. Yeah. I mean, you're, you are talking about a smaller universe. Definitely, homes, but, so. but I think people, the perspective that anything UFC is bigger than anything Bellator isn't necessarily true either. It's going to be an interesting one. I mean, what Dana White likes to say these guys don't know what they're doing, and a lot of what they're doing seems to indicate that could be true. What they're kind of doing is, like you said, throwing everything against the wall and seeing what, what sticks. I'm interested in seeing what the numbers were on Fightmaster after... Uh, 
Uh, they, they were up from the from the prior week. I mean, but the down live car- from Bellator. You know, down from the Slightly, Bellator. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you can get anywhere, stay above 50% of people, you know, going in and watching Fightmaster, you're doing all right. But at the same time, if you were w- there to watch fighting and you less people stick around to watch their reality show, it kind of suggests that reality show isn't working. Let's quickly chat about UFC 163. It's coming up Saturday night. Jose Aldo defending his featherweight title against the Korean zombie Chan Sung Jung. Um, seven to one favorite is Aldo at this point. Any, uh, how could uh, Chan Sung Jung win this fight? Is it even conceivable? Again, I just don't see it. I think that Jose Aldo is just completely focused. Uh, his skills, really has skills in every single area of the game. Uh, he still wants to remain the champion. Uh, he comes from humble beginnings. So I, I just really don't see a zombie winning this fight. But again, it's mixed martial arts, anything can happen. You know, not a lot of people gave Chris Weidman a chance to beat Anderson Silva. Not only did he beat him, he knocked him out. So I think if Zombie can get this fight down to the ground, use his wrestling abilities and try to attack with uh, some sort of top game, maybe that's his best option. But to stand and trade with this guy doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, we've talked about this before, and I've said this before. In the world of seven to one underdogs, there's something about this one. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Gustafson's gonna long be a odds, seven I to one. for yeah. any MMA yeah. fight. Yeah, I mean, Gustafson's gonna be a seven to one underdog or better, but this one somehow can't you picture it? Something about the Korean zombie, he's got a great chin, he's got these intangible factors. He believes, despite the fact, you know, no one thought he was gonna, you know, get the first twister or get a Darce choke on Poirier or knock out Mark Hominick. In the world of 7 to 1 underdogs, this isn't the craziest one. And let's not forget, Aldo notoriously has some tough weight cuts down to 145. Yep. And as that guy, each successive fight, it seems that 145 is not going to be this guy's permanent home. That's coming up on Saturday night, though. Coming up right now, we've got more Fight News Now Extra.